death is not easy to talk about, but what if we've been looking at it all wrong, right? Like a butterfly can't live until the caterpillar dies in the cocoon. Death is a conversion. Well, because of Easter, because of Jesus, death is no longer an ending for us. It's a transition to greater life. Jesus died so that we can live. This is love. Every kid has some sort of toy or object that they end up desperately wanting. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? Maybe it came up on a commercial if you still watch television and your kids are getting commercials these days, or, or maybe they saw something in the store, but they desperately, desperately want it. And in many cases, you know, maybe a parent, myself or, or Embry, will go and, and will buy the child the thing that they wanted, or quite often a grandparent will buy the child something that they wanted. Or, hey, on a good day, sometimes my kids will even save up their own money and buy it themselves, right? But then they, they get this toy, they get this object, and they carry it with them everywhere. It goes everywhere with them, right? It's in their backpack. They're sneaking it to school. They're sleeping with it. It's at the dinner table with them. They're taking it with them in the car and then throwing a fit and crying when you tell them that they can't take it in to the store with them, right? We, we've, many of us have been there and, and, you know, if you don't have kids, then chances are you experience this in your own life too, right? This, this love for this thing that you have, but then inevitably something terrible happens. You know, the toy breaks, the doll loses a shoe, the, the Lego falls apart and a piece goes missing. What happens then? Tears, right? Tears and regret and more tears, right? And just, just, just coming down their face everywhere. And then the, you hear them saying things like, why did I do that, right? Why did I take it with me? Why did I throw it in frustration? Or, or, or why did I smack it or pull it that way? Or on, on some days when they're being especially melodramatic, why did this happen to me? If you have your own story of something like this happening, I'd, I'd love to hear it. Why don't you share it in the comments down below? We'd all love to chuckle along with you or support you if it's something that you're going through right now. Today, we're concluding our Easter series, the series that we started on Easter morning. And in this series, we've been exploring the fact that the resurrection changed everything. Because of the resurrection, we know what the death of Jesus is all about. Him on a cross, something that doesn't really make any sense, right? God in human flesh allowing himself to be crucified, Brutally killed. Good Friday doesn't make any sense without Easter Sunday. Because without the resurrection, it's just a guy that died. But because of the resurrection, we now see that Jesus is who he said that he is. That Jesus truly has purchased for us freedom from sin. That God loves us. That he cares for us. In fact, the cross and the resurrection provides for us a brilliant picture of the love of God. Jesus on the cross and God raising Jesus from the grave. This is love. God's love is a love that forgives us and frees us. God's love is a love that conquers the grave. And God's love is a love that makes all things new. Today, we're going to explore the question of what does it mean for God to make all things new? What, is it, what does it mean? Why does it actually matter for us here and now that God has said that he's making all things new? Why should we care about it? Because it, it seems like something in the distant future, right? What does it mean? Heavenly Father, I just ask today that you will open our hearts and that you will help us as we explore with, with genuineness. You will help us to understand and be inspired 
by your love and how it makes all things new. Lord, will you take my feeble human words that I'm about to speak and make them something worthwhile through the power of your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me get back to my kids. For all, like, what, what do I do in response to something of theirs breaking? What, what do you do? Share that, share that with us in the comments. But what, what do I do? Well, often, like most parents, I'll offer to make the situation right. You know, if it, if it happened on accident or it wasn't their fault, sometimes I'll say something like, well, maybe for your birthday, we or your grandparents can, can buy you a new one. Have you, you, you ever done that before? What often happens is the child who, who is so upset at the loss of this toy or pet or whatever, they'll say those words that we hate to hear. I don't want a different one. I want that one. I want the one that I had. I don't want a new one, right? Maybe there's a reason behind it right? They liked the color. They liked the style. They liked the function. They were emotionally connected in in some way. I, I don't know. But usually if you ask the kid, well, why don't you want a new one? Why do you want the same one? They can't even tell you why. They just know that they want that one, but they want it fixed. They want it whole. You know, oftentimes this is how we look at the world. We as adults, we look at at the world that way. And if we're really, really honest, we don't actually want some far away other place, right? No matter how perfect, no matter how peaceful, no matter how wonderful that far away place that, that we'll go when we die is, we don't really want somewhere different. We want this world. We want this life, but fixed. Do you know what I'm talking about? You, you want your loved ones, but alive and never to die. Isn't that right? You want your loved ones, but never to die. You know, you, you, you want the relationships that you have now, right? But you want them without the brokenness, without the heartache, without the challenge, right? Ewan's up here. He's helping me preach today. So thank you, Ewan. Thank you. We, we, we want the things that we have now, but we, we just want them fixed, We just want them to work properly. And and yet, despite this desire of ours to have what we have, but for it not to be broken, we are surrounded by things falling apart. See, friend, we, we don't want all new things. We want all things to be made new. Yet we look around and there's there's brokenness in the world everywhere, right? In our systems, in our governments. All around us, there's brokenness, there's injustice, there's oppression, there's poverty, there's sickness, disease. And, and you know, this, this still surprises some people. A lot of people, they'll, they'll look at these situations and they say, shouldn't we be beyond this by now? You know, every time I hear about racism going on in the States or even here in Canada, I go, Haven't we gotten past this? We're all human beings made in the image of God. Why are things like this still? It surprises us. We know it's not right. We should be beyond this. And we saw a similar sentiment happen in Europe after World War I. You know, before World War I, everything was amazing. Society was progressing. People were getting a handle on things. People thought that they were becoming civilized. And then the unspeakable happened when in World War I, more people than they had ever seen before were killed. And their spirits were crushed. We saw this more recently after 9-11. You know, the world was settling settling into a, a globalized reality. Things were good. The economy was great. There was unprecedented international cooperation going on. And we know how it turned out. Tragedy struck and the world went to war. And borders became more strictly enforced. Flying was no longer something simple. We see this right now right, with COVID-19. We had been trusting in science and medicine. Whatever comes your way, science has an answer for it. 
Don't worry about anything. You know, we, we didn't worry about things to the point that it turns out a lot of people weren't even washing their hands after going to the bathroom. If you're one of those, don't comment in the comments. We don't want to know. All right, just start washing your hands. But, you know, we were in this place of thinking, no problem, right? Science has the answers. And then all of a sudden, we're surprised by COVID-19 as it spreads around the globe and upsets economies and our ability to have control over our lives and know what's coming next. But as the church... As those with scripture in our hands, we understand that this brokenness is caused by sin and evil. Friend, evil holds the world in its grip and sin has infected the human heart. And so we we, want to know, right? What is God going to do about this? What is God going to do? Does God offer us all new things? You know, is God just offering to take us away from here into heaven? Or can God really make all things new? What's God going to do? Last week, we talked about Paul. Paul describing these witnesses to the resurrection and why it really matters that Jesus raised from the dead, that death is defeated, that a new beginning is possible. And that you receive this new beginning through no merit of your own. You can't do anything to earn it. It's all a free gift from Jesus. It's all about what he did on the cross in his resurrection. But Paul doesn't stop there. Paul actually continues in his letter to the Christians in Corinth by giving us a fuller picture of what our hope as Christians really is. So let me read that to you. Will you read along with me wherever you're at right now? It's going to be on the screen below me. He writes, but let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not all die, but we will all be transformed. It will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye. When the last trumpet is blown, for when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to life forever. And we who are living will also be transformed for our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. And then when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, this scripture will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? You and isn't that your hope? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Isn't that your hope? But let me tell you what Christian hope is not, all right? Christian hope is not some sort of compensation. Our hope is not that one day God is just going to make it up to us with mansions in heaven and streets of gold. All right, yes, there's going to be rewards in heaven. There's great things for us in heaven. But our hope is not found in God transforming us and paying us back for all the things that we did in life and had to go through in life. You know, yes, I understand things were bad. So here, let me make it up to you by giving you this. That's not what our hope is in. Likewise, Christian hope is not an evacuation. It's not an evacuation. See, we often forget about this because of the way that we talk about heaven. Don't get me wrong. Heaven is an awesome place. I am excited for heaven. But not even heaven for the first Christians was the focus of their hope. Don't get me wrong. Heaven is real, but it is not the main point. New Testament scholar and historian N.T. Wright famously said, heaven is important, but it's not the end of the world. I want you to imagine with me having a child, okay? And imagine that this child is being bullied on the playground at school. You have that picture in your head. And then as they're being bullied, you, uh, just imagine that, that your child turns to the bully and says, will you just wait Because my mom or my dad, they're on their way here. And when they get here, you're going to be sorry. You're going to be sorry. And so you show up in your vehicle. Your kid comes running over to the car and and says, mom or or dad, uh, this kid over here, he's been picking on me. He's been so mean to me. 
What are you gonna what are you gonna do about it, mom? What are you gonna do about it, dad? Here's all the things that he's been doing, and the child that has been bullying your kid is standing right there. Now, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Let us know. Okay, let us know. Tell us in the comments. What what would you do? I want you to imagine just telling your kid, oh man, I, I'm so sorry, honey. Well, let's go. Get in the car and I'll get you some ice cream. Now I I I know ice cream is amazing. You like ice cream? I like ice cream. Ice cream is amazing. And your kid is probably going to say yes. No kid says no to ice cream. All right? But that's not really what the kid wants. And neither is leaving the playground. But friend, how we talk about heaven sometimes looks just like this. We, we say Jesus is going to come back and he's going to airlift us away. He's going to leave the world just as messed up and miserable as before, but we're not going to be there. Can I share with you, that's not good news. That's not good news. Can, can you imagine watching a movie where just all of a sudden the main character that's going through so much is just airlifted out of the situation, but nothing is actually resolved? You would say that was the worst movie you've ever seen. And yet the way that we present heaven, the way that we present the good news of Jesus, it's just like that. It's not really good news. It's not. What about the bully? Right? Who's going to show the bully that his tactics didn't work? Who's going who's to stop the bully from continuing to do what he's been doing to others? Will the playground ever be safe? For people to just enjoy themselves on. See, I believe what we want and and what we would do as parents in that situation we talked about is we would get out of the car and we would give the bully a stern warning or more. I'm ashamed to admit it would probably be or more for me. Yeah, you know, or more. And we're not going to go into more what more might be, right? But, but we're going to get that bully off of the playground. And, and maybe then we're even going to play there with our child just to, to make things better for the kid and to rub it into the bully that, that my kid gets to have fun and you're not welcome here if you're going to be like that, right? Like that, that's what the good parent's going to do. That's what I hope that you would do. Because we want our child to know the nightmare is over and it is once again safe. And this is what Paul is getting at when he's talking about Jesus coming to reign and put everything under his feet. He says, then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God, the father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Jesus' friend John later received a vision of this that fills our hearts with hope. He writes, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne say, Look, God's dwelling is here with humankind. He will dwell with them and they will be his peoples. God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. There will be no mourning, crying, or pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. And then the one seated on the throne said, Look, I'm making all things New. Did you hear that? Jesus will swallow up death in victory. He's going to wipe away every tear. He's going to make the heavens and the earth new. And God is going to come down and dwell with us here in this place. Man, if that excites you, hit, the, hit that like button or, or put us a comment. Just say amen, whatever. But let us know you're in this with us. Isn't that amazing? See, this isn't about us getting out and just going somewhere else. No, our hope is about God coming here and restoring and remaking the world, the very universe, and filling it with himself. That is what creation was created to be, to be a carrier of the glory of God. Friend, Christian hope is the new creation. That's what it is. The great end that we're looking for is kind of like a great Easter morning. 
God will do for heaven and earth what he did for Jesus. He will raise it up in newness of life. Imagine a resurrection for the cosmos, a new creation. See, this is the hope that we can bring to all the people that we know. This is why it's so important to share our faith constantly in varied ways. Friends, we have great news, great news of of hope and new beginnings and life and love. And, And friend, we need to be sharing it with the people that God has placed around us, with our coworkers and friends and families and neighbors, everyone. You have great news. Why don't we share it? Why are we so afraid to tell people the best news that there could possibly be in their lives? How have we allowed ourselves to become so timid? So maybe it is that today you're watching this and you need a new beginning. Just as there will be a new creation for the world one day, friend, can I let you know that today can be the first day of a new creation for you? The day God starts putting things back together for you. See, it's easy to look out there and see all of the brokenness that sin and evil have caused in the world and to say, yeah, that world, it's a pretty messed up place. Those people need to get their act together. But friend, the fact of the matter is, is that sin and brokenness are at work in you. Evil is at work in you. You might say, no, no, I'm a good person good person, Pastor Stephen. Anything I do, I I don't set out to do that. But that's exactly my point. Every one of us is chained to sin. Where's the hope? Where's the better tomorrow? Friend, that's what Jesus offers to you. Right now, sin and evil are keeping you bound and broken. The same poison that is infecting the world has infected you. But can can I share with you, there is a cure. There is a cure. And that cure is named Jesus. The new creation is here now because of Jesus on the cross. When he was on the cross, Jesus drained the poison of the great serpent. Jesus allowed the enemy to strike his worst blow against him. And and Jesus died under that blow. But with that blow, the enemy exhausted his power. And then God rose Jesus from the grave with victory that he wants to give to you. Father raised Jesus in victory over sin, death, and evil itself. See, friend, Easter is not just new creation one day for the whole world. It's not just something out there. It also means new creation now for you. Paul also wrote this. He said, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. You can experience this new creation right now by letting Jesus set you right from the inside out. You can be made new. Did you hear that? You you can be made new right now. It's a process, but it can it can begin right now. This recreation, this rebirth, this resurrection of you can happen right now. It can begin in you. So right now, if if this is something that you want, if you're saying to yourself, I need Jesus, what what he did for me, it stirs me, it moves my heart, and I I just want to serve him, I just want to follow him, I want this new life, Then, then all around here, wherever you're at right now, whether you're in your bedroom or your dining room or your living room, whether you're alone or with a whole bunch of people, I just want all of us in solidarity with everyone that is watching right now to close our eyes and pray this prayer together. And if you pray this prayer from your heart, know that you are taking the first step in your journey with Jesus. So pray with me. Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner, but I know that you offer to make me new. 
I give my life to you. Please give me yours. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Transform me with your love. I choose to follow you from this time forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, if you just prayed that prayer for the first time and meant it in your heart, I want to let you know that, that, that we are so happy that we are just celebrating with you right now. You have made such a wonderful decision starting this life-transforming journey with Jesus. We want to be able to connect with you and celebrate with you. So right now, if you're on Church Online, you'll see in the chat there that, that there's something that's come up saying, hey, I made a decision to give my life to Jesus, and it says, raise my hand. If you just made that declaration, today. Will you raise your hand and then click the button that says get in touch with us and, and let us know who you are so that we can get resources into your hands so we can connect you to a community online right now and in the future in person. If you're on Facebook or YouTube or you're watching later, just put something in the comments or message us or send us an email. We, we want to celebrate with you. We want to provide you with resources for this next step. And I hope that all of you will join us next week as we talk about one of the greatest weapons that we've been given by God in the midst of all the chaos around us. God bless. We'll see you soon.